The following contains spoilers for the upcoming season of Game of Thrones. Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about two yet unseen seats of two great houses, the strongholds that we are going to see in the upcoming season. The first one that we are going to see in season 7 is said to be among the most beautiful castles in the Seven Kingdoms, it's situated on a broad, symmetrically shaped hill, is known for its famous briar maze, labyrinth of beautifully maintained hedges that is placed between the outermost and middle walls and serves two important purposes, as entertainment for the castle's inhabitants and as deterrence against enemies, since any invader that would manage to penetrate the outer wall would have a hard time finding their way throughout the complex growth of thorns. This same castle is known for its beautiful complex of towers, courtyards, greenery, fountains and for its places of worship, while outside its walls, meadows and fields of flowers can be seen in every direction and if by any chance you haven't figured out about which stronghold I'm talking about, it's the seat of House Tyrell and the regional capital of the Reach, it's High Garden. This famous stronghold, beside being noted for its gardens, also contains the square towers that date from the Age of Heroes, while newer towers are taller and round. This seat of House Tyrell that we are going to see in the upcoming season will be portrayed by Almodovar del Rio Castle that was built in 8th century and was restored a few times throughout the history. This castle will probably have an appearance in three episodes, as three directors accompanied with showrunners were preparing castle for filming. Once the leaked photos confirmed that we are about to see this beautiful stronghold, we all surely didn't expect battle taking place inside its walls, even though leaked plot stated it, but as time was passing, as the casting for extras took place with requests for 10 people in good physical condition, with military experience to play soldiers, and with a Lannister flag that was seen flying on this same castle that will represent High Garden, battle within its walls quickly became a certain event of season 7. As I've already brought you a video 4 months ago, in which I provided you all informations about a battle and the death of a major character that will happen in High Garden, I will not talk that much about it in this video, but in a case you're not caught out with spoilers and in case you didn't watch my previous videos, I'm going to repeat a few at this point confirmed notes about an event that will take place inside High Garden. Cersei, who should be proclaimed as the Mad Queen, destroyed the only strong Lannister's ally which means that she will have to make a new alliances, and beside Euron Greyjoy, the Tarlis are going to be Lannister's new allies. Which at first sounds extremely surprising as House Tarly of Horn Hill is among the houses that swear fealty to House Tyrell of Highgarden, but the fact is that the head of House Tarly, Randall, has always been loyal towards Lord Paramount of the Reach, but has always despised Tyrell women. Now that all male Tyrells are killed, Olena Tyrell is left as the sole member and ruler of House Tyrell, accompanied with the fact that Randall Tarly has always despised Tyrell women, this alliance between the Lannisters and the Tarlys, after all is not that surprising. The result of this same alliance is going to be Jaime Lannister leading Lannister army, along with Randall and Deacon Tarly leading their Tarly army. They are going to march on High Garden, and also from leaked photos we've seen the outcome of that battle, which will result in Jaime's and Randall's victory. That is not surprising at all. Jamie and Randall will have numbers. They will outnumber Tyrell's soldiers, and both of them have a lot of military experience, especially Randall Tarly, who is known as one of the best battle commanders in the Seven Kingdoms. If you are wondering, why are they going to attack High Garden? The answer is pretty simple, so let's just put it this way. Beside the most important purpose, beside destroying their enemy and decreasing Daenerys' strength by conquering Highgarden, Cersei would also conquer important crossroads, as Highgarden lies on the banks of the river Mander and is where the Ocean Road meets the Rose Road, and is a major passage linking Old Town and King's Landing, and beside those two facts, Highgarden also has rich fields and was provisioning food to the capital, something the Lannisters lost with killing almost every member of House Tyrell. In the third season, Marjorie perhaps even foreshadowed this assault on High Garden, as she reminded Cersei of the importance of House Tyrell's support in the war, as the Reach provided food to the capital. While this march and the assault on High Garden are confirmed by leaked photos, by leaked plot, Jamie will also confront Olena Tyrell while he's at High Garden. According to leaked plot, Lady Olena will admit to Jamie everything about how she and Littlefinger poisoned Joffrey, which will end with Jamie allowing Olena to drink poison and kill herself before getting captured. For all of you that are wondering, why would Elena admit to Jaime that she killed his firstborn son? The answer is actually pretty simple. If you still remember a conversation between Lady Elena and Peter Baelish, which happened in 7 episodes of season 5, a conversation in which the Queen of Thorns threatened Littlefinger and said, I promise Lord Baelish that our fates are joined. Together we murdered a king, 
if my house should fall, I will have nothing to hide. At a moment in which Jamie and Randall conquer Highgarden, Lady Elena will be aware that her life is over, that she can either kill herself or become a hostage, which would also result with her death eventually. Lady Olena, aware that her fate is sealed, at a moment in which Jamie is going to confront her at Highgarden, will admit everything to Jamie because, as she said herself, she has nothing to hide once her house falls. As we know, her house had fallen, supported by a fact that Lady Olena will be aware that she's going to die one way or another. Lady Olena will certainly admit to Jamie everything, since that's something what Olena would do, meaning that the leaked plot seems to fit flawlessly with the mind of Olena Terrell, which sadly makes leaked plot once again being pure truth, as many times since it's been leaked. All of this that I mentioned in the last minute or two was only a few most important notes about the battle and the death that is going to happen inside Highgarden Walls, everything that you have already been introduced with in my previous videos. After they conquer Highgarden, Jamie and Randall with their armies will march back home with carriages full of goods loaded from Highgarden. While they are heading home, Daenerys' army will attack Jamie's and Randall's army and take an opportunity to fight them on the open field and to avenge her ally, which is confirmed by leaked photos as well. This huge battle will start with a tracking ambush, but during the battle, Daenerys will also appear riding Drogon, which a lot of smoke and burnt carriages are confirming. This battle will end with a lot of casualties for both sides, as we can see a lot of dead men on the ground, but it's going to be Daenerys' victory. However, during this battle, Randall and Deacon Tarly are going to be captured, while Bronn will save Jaime from almost getting killed, whereupon they are going to escape and go to the second stronghold that we are going to see for the very first time in the upcoming season. This stronghold is located on the western coast of Westeros, on a rocky promontory overlooking the Sunset Sea. This castle is built into a natural rock formation, it's curved out of great stone hill colossal rock, beside the sunset sea and its base contains large sea carved caverns. While Highgarden is among the most beautiful castles in the Seven Kingdoms, this castle is among the most formidable and well defended castles in Westeros and has been measured at three times the height of the Wall of Hightower of Old Town. As you probably guessed by now, I'm talking about the capital of the Westerlands, about the ancestral stronghold of House Lannister, and because of all these specifications, the Casterly Rock, also known as the Rock, will be an ideal shelter for Jaime and Bronn, even though they won't stay long in the Casterly Rock, still we are going to see this famous seat of House Lannister for the first time. In the books, Tyrion described the strength of Casterly Rock through his thoughts, as he once thought, Stone, I must be stone, I must be Casterly Rock, hard and unmovable. Casterly Rock will be represented by Chuhyo Castle, as we could see a lot of leaked photos from set at Chuhyo Castle, along with Jaime and Bronn and its walls, accompanied by hundreds of Lannister soldiers, the same soldiers that Jaime will lead to the north after the Gold Wedding that we, according to the theory of mine, will witness in the end of Season 7, which is going to be similar to the Red Wedding. As I've already said, in this video I introduced you a little bit more with two famous strongholds that we are going to see for the first time in the upcoming season, but all notes about events that are going to take place inside those castles, along with Danny's ambush I have already introduced you with a few months ago, brought here only to remind you about an importance of appearance of already mentioned strongholds. In conclusion, the showrunners had the biggest budget to spend in comparison with any season so far, which along with the fact that the upcoming season will contain only 7 episodes of usual 10, in my opinion, spending money on providing us 2 yet unseen famous strongholds, beside battle scenes and scenes that will include dragons and direwolves, is the best possible way to spend it. If you want more details about Cersei's new alliances, about Tarly's betrayal, about Jaime's and Randall's assault on Highgarden, about Olena's death, or about Danny's ambush and Jamie's escape to Casterly Rock, or even want more details about the gold wedding theory of mine, feel free to check my older videos in which I provided every single detail about those events, as in this video I included only the most important highlights.